How's it going everyone? I hope you're all doing good. In this study session we are going to be looking at how to draw the mouth. Here on screen I'm drawing the skull on a side view and I'm going to draw this out twice because on the first skull here the mandible, our jawbone, will be closed and on the other one it will be open. This is where I want to start when it comes to learning how to draw the mouth. As always, you need to understand what it is you are drawing and that's why I take the time in these videos to go over the anatomy first like this before I attempt to draw these things. Now I covered the skull in a previous video so you might be familiar with the mandible here. The mouth needs to move and so that's why the head consists of one big fixed bone being the cranium and then a moving bone being this mandible. Although the maxilla, this bone above here, forms part of the mouth as well. But that's fixed or, or sutured is the term I believe to the skull and you'll see how that plays a part soon. However, in terms of how the mandible moves, here's a diagram on screen. It can move in quite a few directions and those movements obviously have an effect on how the mouth appears. Now, in a more recent video that I made, I had covered all of the facial muscles. This included a muscle called the orbicularis oris, and this sits over the mouth. Here I'm drawing a skull on a three quarter view now, and I'll draw this muscle onto it. I do go over how to draw the skull this way on any angle in its own video, but we will likely be going over this again in a later study session. At either side of this, at the corners of the lips, are visible bumps called nerds due to a lot of other facial muscles meeting here. These muscles pull and move the orbicularis oris to make different expressions. This is like a, a muzzle in a way, at least that's how Andrew Loomis describes it in his book Drawing the Head and Hands. However, in the book Figure Drawing Design and Invention by Michael Hampton, he refers to what he calls the dentosphere, an area which encapsulates the lower section of the skull. This is drawn from the top of the chin up to underneath the nose, and this area pushes out and away from the face, and so the lips are drawn on top of this form. Here I'll create a few examples, I draw the sphere out, and then I place the lips onto this, having them curve around the sphere. And I'll draw two of these, one where we are looking up at the lips from below and one where we are looking down from above. Like I say, we'll be drawing more mouths later in this video, but that's what is referred to as the denture sphere. Now, I do think that the best way to think of this is to do what Proko suggested, and I'm referring to everyone's work here, but in his video, he referred to this form the lips sit on as a, a bloated tuna can. It's a, a bit of a weird comparison, but it makes sense when you look at how the lips sit on the face. They must always follow the same perspective as everything else, and I think that's the main reason for this. It helps to reinforce your perspective when drawing. Here I'm drawing this on a few angles off to the side. So now's a good time to look at the structure of the lips and to help me go over this I'm going to draw out the face on a front view and on one half of this face I'll draw out the skull and the orbicularis oris as well as the cartilage of the nose that we covered in the previous video. Essentially I'm drawing what's under the skin but then on the other half I'll draw out what we see on surface level because that's what really matters, right? If we are drawing people, we want to be able to draw them as they appear. I'll also draw the outer edge of the skin on the left hand side. And this is quite a, a nice diagram to observe. I've drawn this from reference. I often refer to a, a very useful application called Complete Anatomy on which you are able to view a 3D anatomical model of the human body. Anyways, let's talk about this. There's a few things to go over here. Connecting the nose to the mouth, there's what is called the philtrum, and I've always wondered what this was called. The top lip below follows the shape of this, which results in the top lip being shaped like a letter M. And this shape is actually referred to as the cupid's bow. Sometimes this shape can be less distinctive though. The lines running down at either side from the nose to the mouth are the nasolabial folds. Again, this is something that varies in appearance between people. 
There is of course the upper lip here, notice how in the middle it drops down, wedging between the bottom lip forming a, a V shape. It's an important part to consider when drawing the lips which we'll be doing later in this video. The bottom lip pushes inwards more than the top lip, this is more obvious when viewed from a side view which I'll quickly sketch out now. And I'll do the same here and show the skin laid over onto the skull underneath. It's cool to see the relationship between the lips and the, the maxilla slash mandible. Now on a side view like this, it's also clear to see the planes of the lips and how they shape the face. Throughout the previous videos on drawing the eyes and nose, I had been using the simplified head planes by Loomis as a guide to drawing these features. Now when it comes to the lips, he also divides them into planes, and you can see here as I draw this out how the top lip is divided into three planes forming the cupid's bow. The bottom lip is also drawn in three planes angled round the shape of the head. So now it's time to start drawing out some mouths and I'm going to start by drawing most of these on a front view before then drawing some on different angles in perspective. I am drawing these from reference as well, I found some images online and also awkwardly took some photos of my own mouth and so I'd recommend doing the same if you are starting out. I'm also going to draw some mouths which are open here, like this one that's going to be smiling. Sometimes it can look creepy drawing out these mouths with the teeth on show. We only see the top row of teeth on this example though. I also shade these lips in because I think that helps to define the form of the lips better. I'm able to add some shadows and also give these lips some texture. Notice how the lines that I add when shading in the lips follows the shape of them. This one is a strange pose but it's good practice to draw these mouths out in different positions. Some are quite challenging but it gives you a, an idea of how important the mouth is when it comes to making expressions. Just looking at these mouths in isolation portrays some emotion. You'll notice I also draw in some of the nose. I think this helps to place the mouth in some context which I needed to understand the angle these are drawn on. You'll see when I draw some of these on, on different angles soon, or even in the previous video where we had drawn the nose, it's a, a really useful feature when it comes to indicating the perspective you are drawing the face on, whereas the lips and mouth is quite the opposite, I think. I, I know we had covered the denture sphere and the bloated tuna can, but without the context of any other features, it, it can be hard to understand these mouths and their placement in space. So that's why I also draw the nose in. This mouth is wide open so you see the tongue inside there as well along with both rows of teeth. As I said earlier because I was drawing these from reference I was also able to draw in some of the other details such as the nasolabial folds and other creases in the skin that are formed when the mouth is pulled open or moves in different directions. This also does well to emphasise expressions. Anyways, I'll draw a few more of these out and then I'll look at drawing these on different angles. Okay, so those are a fair few examples of mouths drawn on a front view, posing in different ways. Feel free to also use my drawings as reference here. Anyways, to conclude this video, I'm now going to draw in some mouths on different angles. And to do this, I take the same approach. Again, I am drawing these from reference. I begin by outlining the mouth and all of these other features before then shading in the lips and adding details. 
In future study sessions, I will likely be tasked with drawing mouths from imagination, which I think will be a challenge. I, I personally think that it's a, a lot harder to draw okay looking mouths in comparison to the other features that we have covered so far, such as the eyes and nose. I'll be looking at drawing the ears next, so we'll see how that goes, but after that I'm going to be bringing all of this together and drawing faces and heads on, on different angles from imagination. I also want to revisit the facial muscles and look at them in regards to the role they play in making expressions. It's a, a rather daunting subject to be fair, but I think that this is a, a practical way to approach it step by step in each video like this. Anyways, I, I think this example looked really good. I'll only create a, a few more of these soon as I've drawn a lot of them already. As always, I will be making a study document and posting that to the Patreon page. If you are unfamiliar with what a, a study document is, it's essentially a tutorial on paper. I reformat a lot of the content created here and publish it in that way so that it's easy to refer to. It's basically like a page from a how to draw book. Anyways, here I'm almost done drawing these mouths. So there we go, that is the mouth, I've drawn quite a few of them out here, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, with that being said thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the content I create then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real time drawing footage and more, plus you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.